In some parts of Afghanistan, women's rights have improved since the fall of the Taliban in 2001. 3.2 million girls are now getting an education, a concrete improvement following the ban on female education under the Taliban rule in the late 1990s. But Afghanistan is still considered one of the worst countries for women to live in, and progress has not come without sacrifice. Attacks on girls' schools continue, including the suspected poisoning of more than 150 schoolgirls earlier this year. The United Nations says in 2011 there were at least 100 185 attacks on schools and hospitals in Afghanistan, the majority in opposition to girls' education. British parliamentarian Malcolm Bruce chaired a new study advising the government on its development program in Afghanistan. For us, we thought the absolute litmus test is the status of women. Uh, they have benefited a lot from the end of the Taliban and from the period, if you like, of international engagement. And many of them are really concerned that the gains could be lost and there's certainly evidence it's being pushed back. Bruce says women's rights must be supported after international combat troops leave in 2014. But he says of the nearly 100 projects funded by Britain, only two of those are directly or explicitly focused on women. He says Britain's focus on building a viable state in Afghanistan has been misdirected. Whilst a lot has been achieved, and it would be wrong to underestimate that, building a viable state hasn't happened and isn't really going to happen anytime soon. And yet that's supposedly the British government mission. So I think our view was, rather than focus exclusively on that, you really should concentrate on the things that you can achieve, recognising that you may have to be fleet of foot and very flexible as the situation changes on the ground. Security in Afghanistan remains a major issue. At least 40 people were killed on Friday when a suicide bomber struck at a mosque in northern Afghanistan after Eid al-Adha prayers. If this situation continues, it's the Afghan government, above all, that needs international support says Gareth Price from the London-based research group Chatham House. Building up the Afghan state has to be a priority. and You want to build up the state system, not leave it to NGOs who will be very vulnerable in the event of things taking a downturn after 2014. Strengthening the state, he says, is the best way to fortify education and women's rights. Sailor Hennessy for VOA News, London.